Good evening. Uh, tonight it's Thursday, August uh, 17th, 2023, 7.30. This is the Newbury Zoning Board of Appeals. Um, my name is Eric Svahn. I'm the chair. Michelle Weber is a associate member um, and sitting in on this uh, voting member on this application. Mara Tonawali, who's a member. Um, we have Chrissy Opriu, who's our excellent administrative assistant. <laughs> and we have Larry Murphy, who's the liaison from the planning. So with that, we will open the meeting and we will get to our first hearing, which is continued. Okay, uh, public hearing. Brian and Helen Bua, 134 Northern Boulevard, Plum Island. The applicants are requesting a special permit finding for relief from section 97-4D5C02 upward extension and from section 97-4D4A change of use of the Newberry zoning bylaws and any other permit relief as may be required under the town of Newberry's zoning bylaws to allow for the proposed project in order to alter or renovate the pre-existing commercial restaurant store into a single family dwelling with an increase in height but with conformance on the property located at 134 Northern Boulevard, Palm Island, either Mass 0195, accessory map, 04 lot 139. Alrighty, so this is a continuation of last month's hearing um, in terms of what the zoning board had discussed after the um, project was presented. There was um, some questions on size, there was questions on the number of bedrooms, structural engineering, which isn't our purview, but we had some comments about that, uh, whether the project was filed with ComCom and whether they did not win and if they would have any comments because of the amount of impervious service that was previously proposed. Um, we heard from, I think about eight plus, um, neighbors uh, or people speaking uh, on the project and so we're continuing that there are revised drawings that were issued and received and distributed to us I we got them did we get them last Thursday we get them Monday yeah. Monday okay so we received them Monday so Michelle did you receive you drawings mm -hmm. no, Mario yep. Yep. okay did you have Ample chance to look at them and review them? Yep, I looked at them. Mario? Yep. Okay. Um, so, with that, I'd ask the applicant to come forward and explain the revisions that were made to the application. So, thank you. Um, my name is Brian Buell. I'm here with my wife, Helen. Um, we're currently residents on Plum Island. And uh, we were here last month in front of the board, you know, discussing the project along, you know, with the others as well. And as a result of that meeting, um, we hopefully were able to address all the concerns brought to us, you know, during that meeting. And what I can do is I can go through the plans quickly and provide like a quick summary of you know, what has been done. Um, where we are right now is um, basically this is the existing this is the existing building as it sits on uh, Northern Boulevard, it's on the corner of Northern Boulevard and 43rd Street. It's currently being used as a restaurant and along go to the boulevard, this gray area. This is the area that was used for parking. This is like two minutes concrete extending along here. And also there's a gravel area along 43rd Street that's graveled as well that was used for parking. The lightly brown shaded is that of the existing building, like 1,800, uh, square feet of floor area. And on the lot, is some grass area in the back and some sparsely vegetated area is shown in green. What we're currently proposing is this is the, uh, the new layout of what's being proposed. 
Um, that being, initially we were taking off about 10 feet off of the back of the building in here. What we also did was move the 12 foot portion of the building along 43rd Street. And this is the existing proposed footprint that's shown in this light brown. Uh, we removed this pavement area, the gravel area, and it's going to be green space. Green space being like the uh, regrading with dune or deep sand and dune grass plantings, as well as evergreen like pines, uh, other evergreen bushes, you know, native to the island. So what's shown in green is uh, what we're proposing as to be open green space. And just kind of like a summary of what we did is the original building footprint was 1,892 square feet. We made a little over a 50% reduction of the footprint of the building. And our existing proposed building is now 933 square feet, or a 959 square foot reduction in the building footprint. The floor area, uh, we also reduced it a little. The existing floor area of this building is the same as 1,892 square feet. We're currently proposing a floor area of 1,662 square feet, uh, a 230 foot reduction in the floor area of the building. Our lot coverage, again, is pretty much what this original building occupied on the lot. 1,892 square feet. Our lot coverage is now reduced to 1,129 square feet, our reduction of 733 square feet plus. Um, the rear setback currently exists 9.2 feet from the lot line to the rear of the building. That real lot line setback has been increased to 19.6 feet, or a little over doubling the distance from the rear of the proposed building to the lot line from that of the existing. The right setback, this building was originally 14.4 uh, feet from the lot line to the new house is 26.5 feet. And also we have a deck off the side of the house. And from the deck to the street is 16.9 um, feet. Um, you know, both of which is greater than that of the existing. As I mentioned earlier, this is about 700 square feet of pavement in this area. Excuse me, along here. And there's about 300 square feet of gravel area here previously use for parking, which is going to be removed. So it's about a thousand square feet of parking there being removed and turned into green space. Um, and as you can see, the, the, the amount of green space is increased over 2,000 square feet on this lot. It's a 4,900 square foot lot. And we're increasing, as you can see, the green space by over 2,000 square feet. And associated with that is the, uh, the added benefit of the permeability of the, uh, the project itself, like getting the you know, rainwater back into the ground and not being shed off by you know, the pavement and the structure itself. And at that point, I'll be happy to answer any questions. All right. So, the board have any questions or anything? Okay, for right now. <coughs> So one of the questions before is that you're going from a non-conforming use of a commercial use to a allowed right of a one or two family residential. And currently we have a commercial building with no bedrooms and you're proposing three bedrooms. And the bylaws are set up to allow for one additional bedroom but you don't have any to begin with. So that, that is a question that needs to be addressed. Sure. 
Yeah. I'm sorry. You can answer that. We can take it one at a time. Okay. And to add what I previously said is uh, you made mention of the conservation. We did file uh, with both conservation and the DEP on notice of intent for the project. <coughs> bedrooms um, is a limitation of uh, you know, maximum three bedrooms on Plum Island and there's a, there's a somewhat of a grand thing in the regulations of uh, allowing one bedroom to go to two bedrooms and two bedrooms to go to three bedrooms. Such was done early on uh, as part of uh, the water and sewer project for Plum Island in terms of there was a design basis created for the island based on existing and expected uh, flows from it, so the appropriate uh, sewerage system could be designed to handle it, you know, current and in the future. So that's why they have, they did an evaluation of all existing one, two, three, four, five bedroom homes and figured on who has the option to add more bedrooms. Um, in the definitions, you know, bedrooms uh, are defined as what's in Title V, you know, making the link. The current restaurant, I could be right about, the existing restaurant has a Title V design flow of 1,645 gallons per day. And such, in the during design flow of a restaurant, uh, such is based on the number of seats of patrons visiting restaurants. And that is 35 gallons per person per seat, which is the equivalent of six, 1,645 gallons. And basically, that's the, and a bedroom, a Title V design flow for a bedroom is 110 gallons per bedroom. So the equivalent number of bedrooms that the restaurant has for sewage flow is 15 bedrooms. Um, so we believe we're more than meeting the intent of the regulation for bedrooms, whereas effectively this restaurant is contributing 15 bedrooms worth of storage into the system. And what we're proposing is three bedrooms, uh, significant reductions in the amount of storage you know, going into the system. Did you say 35 seats in the restaurant? No, 47 seats. Right, and I bet there weren't 20. Excuse me, this is all just what's on record. Hold on to the comments, please. Okay. okay. We'll, we'll get to it in an organized kind of way. But. Okay. But even, for example, if you want to take your 20 um, bedrooms, uh, that's still um, a little less than half. That's still like seven, eight bedrooms worth of storage. So it's still half of that. So you want to be a conservative, um, you know, 20 bedrooms. However, it's listed and it's represented as a 47 seat restaurant. Like, for example, like the picnic tables that are outside, those are considered seats. You know, so you have, I believe there were three tables outside. You have six at a table, that's 18 uh, seats right there. So it's very easy to come up to the 47. So if you look at the listing in the previous permitting on the lot, it is 47. But regardless, um, you know, what we're proposing is a very significant reduction in the amount of storage going into the system. And the intent of the bylaw for limiting the bedrooms is not to exceed that what is anticipated for the storage loading for existing and proposed structures. Okay, it, it, um, understanding what you said in the Title five flow and calculations uh, on premise make, make sense, but um, there's still about the creation of, of bedrooms and the um, zoning bylaws for the PIOD don't, don't specify it or um, list it that way. Yeah, I believe those sections refer to existing uh, single family homes, existing dwellings. Mm -hmm which this is, uh, you know, falls, uh, 
you can sit outside that corridor because it's not being used as a uh, single family home. Okay, that's so that was that was one question of, of comment, and the second is the number of maximum stories of in the PIOD in terms of allowed uses of going from a non-conforming to an allowed use is two stories, and you have grade floor, first floor, or second floor, and right. a large roof deck. Right, and what we did is um, we did eliminate that portion of living space along 43rd Street, what we were really proposing. There was an extra room with re with uh, restroom yes. adjacent to it, and so it looked like even an extra bedroom, and it looked like um, somewhat of an accessory apartment. Um, two things that shouldn't shouldn't be looking like. Right, um, and that portion of the building has been removed. Understood, but the definition of the story in the bylaws is any finished floor with another floor that's above it. And right. so you, you do have a grade plane floor, you do have a first, what you're calling a first, second floor, so you have three floors and the maximum number of stories is two. I don't follow. Um, as I said, our proposed house is a two-story. There's no living space on the ground floor. It's not living space, it's number of stories. It doesn't say in the allowed uses, municipal uses, owned or operated by the town of Newbury, single family dwelling subject to the dimensional requirements set forth in the table below, the maximum height of 35 feet, the maximum number of stories, two, maximum floor area ratio, maximum lot coverage. So there are, there are dimensional requirements set forth for the allowed uses and the definition of a story is that portion of the building included between the upper surface of a floor and the upper surface of the floor or roof above, excluding attics that have no habitable area and that are used solely for storage and to house mechanical equipment. Intermediate levels such as mezzanines, lofts, penthouses shall be counted as a story. So, and then it counts stories above grade, and there, there's some metrics in there for um, height of the, of the story and percentage of the perimeter. Right. This house we're proposing uh, is basically the same house that's gone before town council on our submission for a house that we currently live at, 16 Plum Island Boulevard. And the uh, issue of stories was mentioned and it was found to be fully acceptable. The only question was with a little area at the, the top landing, uh, which brings out to the roof deck, that they wanted it identified as a non-habitable uh, space. So uh, we believe, you know, we it wasn't something. that it wasn't hab habitable, it was that it was just a minimum size and was of the stair and therefore deemed not to be the story, and so the roof deck stair scenario you have it doesn't count as a story but you still have three stories and I think the part of the point is that um, or my last point would be in terms of the area and the neighborhood and the adjacent properties how does this fit into the neighborhood figure you are over the FAR and you are over the lot coverage and the height that you may have shrunk the footprint so you doubled the size of the height and the roof and the roof deck covering the full roof is quite expansive in size. Um, so I do have a question about the number of, of floors. Um, and Larry, I don't know if we want to ask in terms of other subdivision type things that are submitted in, in terms of how that, that's viewed. And my last comment that I'll make it refers to the design, and although design isn't our purview, um, I do say that I'm not in favor of taking the development that you did in one location and just moving it down the road and building it in another location. Exactly. I find that what I'm asking 
for you to state, or it's your argument to make, is how this building fits and is not more detrimental to the neighborhood for the configuration that you're proposing. Well, the configuration is different from that of our existing home, the 16th of a mile on Boulevard. And I think taking a ride on Northern Boulevard, there are many examples of, if this is being called a three-story building, like four-story buildings, in fact, six homes down is the new home that just completed, the concrete home, so the white. Uh, that home has full two stories, uh, 14 feet of space on the same full rooftop deck with parapet walls. Um, and again, you know, many other homes you know, very similar um, on the island. Um, again, you know, made significant reductions in all the non-conformities. And I think the most important is bringing this use back into that or conforming use to the underlying zoning district, that being residential. It's a non-conforming commercial use in a residential district, whereas if you turn it around, try to put a non-conforming commercial use in a residential district, it would never happen. It's often uh, referred to as spot zoning. Um, but the betterments that we're doing to what's existing, I think clearly you know, it satisfies the intent of the zoning bylaws in doing anything on the island. Um, significant improvements in all areas, block coverage, setbacks, and so forth. And, and again, um, I guess I'm kind of lost on the three stories. So is it a garage under considered a story? I'm, I'm saying that you and your instance here for going from a non-conforming to a, a conforming use and the conforming use has dimensional requirements, how are you meeting those dimensional requirements? And you know, for what you were pro proposing for in terms of keeping the slab and, and rebuilding, um, you, you're under the 97 4 D F, catastrophe or demolition, rebuilding after a finding so as to exceed the total volume of all demolished or destroyed structures and, to, and or exceed the height. Um, and just, if I can make a clarification, we're not demolishing the entire building. Uh, this is a renovation of the existing structure. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, we don't quite have a definition for percentages of what you're touching, but by the time you're, you're doing the improvements, and if you're going to add that many floors on top of an existing, you're, uh, and I know it, it, the building inspector's purview, but you're going to be into new foundations and you're going to be into new, no. totally new walls. No, we'll be, uh, not until, you know, we anticipate in the rear of the building and the side, we're going to put in new cross walls. Uh, you know, to tie into the existing slab. As far as structural, um, these aren't the construction drawings. You know, once we receive approval, we'll generate the construction drawings, which will be approved by the town in compliance with all local and state, you know, regulations for construction. Sorry, those are my questions, Michelle and Mario. I mean, my only concern was the same thing about the stories with the, the three levels. Mm -hmm. No, the, the, the three levels. So, is it the board's opinion that a garage under is considered as a story? Mm -hmm. I'm just thinking of setting a precedent, you know, for this in any future uh, activity on the island. Yeah, I think the. the so, precedent setting is, is limited to the condition of the neighborhood um, and not, it's not blanketed across the island. It, it's, it, it's in terms of our um, 
decision and our our latitude of interpretation or understanding of the bylaws. It's it's very much in terms of being within and keeping and not more detrimental to the neighborhood. And part of that is lot size and the dimensional requirements are in here so that um, there there is more consistency or brought back to consistency for the lot size. That said, there are some existing dwellings that are larger than the site and by means of their alterations or reconstructions um, maintain that size. If, if you have a non-conforming use and you're bringing it back to a residential, you have the right to do that. And by going to a residential, my interpretation here is that you should be meeting the dimensional requirements. And so I'm looking at the, the letter of the law of the dimensional yeah. requirements that are listed here in terms of looking at what you're, you're doing. Um, I do see that you know you did, as you said, made improvements to some setbacks and to some of the, of the metrics, but you're still over 20% um, to 35% on the FAR. Right. So that being the case. You know, so. it, and also in terms of what's presented, you have your site, there's one adjacent. Um, I don't know if the other board members have, have been up and down the street and can can see it, but um, the the argument that uh, I would believe that you need you do need to make is that in terms of keeping with the neighborhood. And if there are other structures and houses uh, adjacent and immediate that wouldn't have the same rights um, and you're asking for additional dimensional criteria than other sites of the same size would have, then, then what you're proposing is, is out, of, out of line and out of context with the, with the existing structure, with the existing uh, neighborhood. So, is it the board's opinion that the, the board does not garage? have an opinion? No, that's I, I'm, I'm right. We're each speaking separately here because there's only three of us. Okay. We can't get together and debate and think through stuff. We have to have it out in the meeting. And so sometimes it's a little rough coming to an understanding if, because that's just the way the board works. I'm just looking at the number of stories. So what we're proposing is a garage under with two stories above it. That your scheme? You're enclosing all that in the bottom, aren't you? So, so we're three stories tonight. Yeah, so, yeah. public comment, just hold on for a little bit. Thank you. Hang on a second. So, there is a difference between those houses that are built because of the, the flood zone requirements that are built up and are not enclosed below, um, and those that are built on grade in terms of where the, the, the story should start. The bottom floor, we eliminated all living space or space used by a person mm -hmm. on the first floor. And it's all garage with a small entryway for the stairs. Um, so, I'm, I'm just, just. I know, but you, you got doors, windows, windows, windows. <laughs> it looks like a four story. Building from that size and for the size of the of a four thousand nine hundred square foot lot, um, and for for looking at the other existing structures or lots and or houses across the street, they're adjacent to your property. They're all two stories with um, or appear to be all two stories. Helen, would you like to say something about the houses on Long Island? Uh, I, just, I have a question. Um, how much you're saying the lot coverage is uh, over the, um, the the FAR? So the total floor area is at 25 percent. You're, is, is you're it, proposing 35 percent, and the lot coverage so at 20 percent. You're proposing 23 percent. The lot coverage. And what else was above it? Or so, over the lot coverage is any built 
structure on the site, so stairways, patios, the, the overall footprint of the building um, count, and you basically just take that total area and divide it into the property size, and you come up with a percentage. For the floor area ratio, it's the habitable space inside the building, and it's um, it's then divided by 25%. So there are metric, I mean, those are the clearly missed, listed metrics of the dimensional requirements for single family dwellings. Um, I, I mean, I'm, I'm bringing it up. I, I have my interpretations or my understandings and I'm, I'm obviously looking for you to make the, the argument of how you're feeling so, here. I guess you know, again, this is, a, this is most properties, structures on the island are non-conforming. Very specs of floor area, lot coverage, et cetera, et cetera. And this being a significant improvement to what's existing, a restaurant, it's, it's a restaurant with all its... Um, no, it ain't. It's it's right. Hang on. Hang on. My house is there. So, yeah, I mean, I don't... Folks, uh, oh, yeah, folks we have uh, public uh, time to speak, okay? Excuse me. What I'm refer, what I'm refer, basically referring to is the footprint of the building, you know, we reduced it by more than 50%. So, hang on, please. Keep this civil. Right. Um, so the floor area we reduced as well. We significantly increased the, uh, the setback from the real outline for the benefit of this neighbor. Like if, for example, we could start scratch the underlying zoning district is residential. So we can come in and build a conforming residential structure. Putting it 10 feet off the, to move this house, put it back here 10 feet off the lot line, meet all the other criteria, maintain the same height. But again, you know, we're trying to provide what's the best for the neighborhood in terms of open green space, reduction of parking, and so forth. Yeah, I, I think the, um, if it was a, if there was nothing on the site right now, you would come in and propose a one family and you'd be under the requirements for what's, what's here. You wouldn't have any leeway of, of, of asking right. for more. You have an existing structure, but it's a non-conforming use. And so the change from one use to another um, doesn't necessarily mean that um, those existing conditions that are there are favorable for the conforming use. Uh, and it's it's an interpretation of, of the, that would be an interpretation of, of the bylaw. And certainly if you were to, to take the existing structure, as you said, and you were to meet the dimensional requirements, you would be within right. So you're, you're still above and beyond in terms of FAR and lot coverage, and it's, it's looking that the design that you have is quite tall, and the um, want for the roof deck is in a flat roof, and the way you've done it, it the roof does conform to the zoning, but it, it doesn't seem to meet the intent of the neighborhood. Well, I believe you know, there are many, you know, residences with, you know, rooftop decks. They mentioned the newest being like six houses down. The concrete house, full two stories, you know, full rooftop deck, um, and, you know, uh, you know, many other houses as well. Um, I, I, I understand what we're, we're focusing on is the immediate lots and, and neighborhood. Um, and, and truthfully, we don't have anything to, to to make your your argument about that within the documents that are presented, and so in, in terms of of at least my driving by and what looking at Google Maps and visually looking at it, I'm I'm looking at something a little little different than what you're stating. So if, if you want to make that argument or push that argument, then it seems that there needs to be more in, in favor of supporting that. Yeah, look, I believe you know we. Brought the structure, it's a significant more compliant to 
for the zoning regulations. Uh, regulations are there for the general public, the interpretation of saying. Uh, and as far as uh, building height, clearly meet the uh, requirements of building height. Um, made a significant reduction on the other non-conformities. Um, building height limitations are generally put in place to detect that of the abutting structures or neighbors. And again, you know, not only you take 10 feet off, you basically took 20 feet off the building. So we have about a 30 foot setback from the closest structure to the uh, proposed house. I really can't add anything more to that. You know, I, I just I'm going to go back to you know you have an existing one story and you're putting two more stories on top of that makes it three stories. Um, well, it's completely renovated. With the first I, I story understand is, that, but there's yeah. three still still three stories. Right, and so again, we're into the F of the. Uh, I'll skip the demolition part. But you're, you're demolishing and rebuilding after a finding. And so it, it, it's, you're asking to demolish and rebuild, um, and you're looking to exceed the requirements that are, are within here um, in terms of the dimensional structures. And then, so it's a two years. And, and again, the, uh, the such a, such findings shall not be made upon the de uh, determination that the proposed alteration to the non-conforming structure or use shall not be substantially more detrimental than the existing non-conforming structure or use to the na to the neighborhood of the PIOD. And, and it just it seems that the height, in terms of the design that you have for the floor area that you're asking for and the block coverage that you're asking for, even though diminished. Are, are still not in keeping within the, um, the neighborhood. Well, you know, I just think we covered pretty much everything, but for uh, in the future, it's, I'm leaving with the board's interpretation that a garage under is considered a story. Yeah. Yeah. So from any future projects on the island, the garage is considered a story mm -hmm. and the two struck thing. So you only have one floor above the same. Which is okay. so Larry, do you have a comment on stories in terms of what subdivisions or Planning board. Yeah, well, we don't really get into that with the planning board. You know, we look at footprints in terms of drainage, but we don't get into the in definition of stories because really the only place that you really find that problematic is on the island. You know, so, so there is a table of dimensional criteria. Right. And yeah. so anything that's newly built must meet the dimension of that that table of dimensional criteria. Yeah, it, it, seemed, it seems to me, and, and I apologize because I wasn't at the last hearing, so I'm coming up yep. new to this, and it seems like the, the difficulty in dealing with this is that, that this garage, uh, th this structure is not on pilings, so it's, it's not in the flood zone district, which requires it to be raised, where you might have a better argument that the garage level was not a story. And, and that has, been discussed and argued in the reverse for neighbors of, of, of the pilings adding height where it adds onto height, but it is necessary because of the requirements of the, the flood zone. So we have we have heard that um, in reverse. Ed, Michelle, do you have any? Yeah, I mean, similar to what we've already been discussing, but, you know, we can look at the setbacks and plan, and that's one thing, but the massing of this is it is out of context with your immediate neighbors mm -hmm. and what is there right now. And, you know, I said it last week as well, or last month, you know, those with uh, the fairly tall dog house there at the, at the roof deck and then solid parapet walls, 
I mean, you're, you don't, you know, in real life when you're looking at that, it feels almost like another story up on that roof deck because the massing is just so solid. There's no views are coming through, sunlight's not coming through, and all that. Yeah. So I think, you know, and understanding that, you know, you knew there was some of your neighbors had some problems with that. I guess it, you know, we had some problems with it that it would have been. Uh, maybe something to look at. To well, we did actually that. look at that and talked about putting the street uh, glass instead of a solid parapet wall mm -hmm. glass. I mean, that, that is the overall provisions of Article 1 of the purpose and intent in, in terms of um, what the bylaws are trying to do across town. Light and air are considerations, um, preventing of overcrowding, undue concentration of population, um, adequate facilities. Um, and I, I know that the, the non-conforming use to a resident as at residential as by right, uh, I'm not sure that everybody feels that losing commercial property on uh, Plum Island is, is a good thing. But that's it's not, it's neither here nor there for us today. Again, it's about you know, mentioning you know, white and openness and so forth. Uh, that's, I believe, specifically you know, the reason why we have zoning uh, to limit the height of structures, to maintain property line setbacks, is not to encroach on you know, budding properties and so forth. And uh, again, you know, the height limitation is fully compliant. Um, there's you know, many, many homes for rooftop decks with parapet walls. As I mentioned, the one six homes down, the new concrete one is an example of one, and there are many others, including ours, on the uh, from Island Boulevard. Um, so, Or adding those back to it doesn't make it more detrimental to the neighborhood. So I think that's what we're all responding to compared to, you know, what's that right now. Yeah. Again, you know, if I could have everyone, you know, the board included, you know, look at the proposed site plan. Basically, we have a paved over lot, commercial, non conforming use, a large footprint, pavement, parking area, you know, not very attractive in the rear of the building. Bunch of propane tanks in the corner and so forth. And we're taking that and providing a lot of open space, green space to the same lot. And like it's over 2,000 square feet of green space we're adding to this lot. Um, you know, putting in uh, beach sand and dune grass, you know, evergreen, pine, cedar plantings, and so forth. You know, my opinion, you know, how long it's, you know, see it as a we have benefit, you know, in satisfying the intent of you know, the bylaws, We're significantly improving the nonconformities of this. So, with with your statement, your your argument, let's open it up. Let's hear from the public. Sure. Let's see what they have to say, and then and we can uh, move to figure out what the, the next steps or resolutions. Sure. Okay. Thank you. So, with that, I'll open it up to the public in an organized kind of way, and. If people would like to speak for, yeah. or people in favor, we'll do favor first. Is there anybody here that would like to speak in favor? I see no one. Okay. Is there anybody here that would like to speak against or just speak? All right. So, um, my name is Richard Slary. Richard, for everybody here, so if we, if Richard brings up some, some points, if you stand up and say I agree with somebody else, but we'd like not to hear the same points over and over again for a condensed view, if you agree with somebody. Um, we did we did open this up previously. We have heard arguments. We're not we're looking for new arguments or a new a new person to add a voice to the list of what we've what we've heard. So nothing like I've said at the last meeting or Yeah like Well then I'll just say that it's the the benefits that he's talking about are just self serving because our entire neighborhood doesn't see the benefit of this house 
And it also should be noted that in his first presentation, it was riddled with lies. There was a, an in-law apartment on the first floor. The square footage that he said wasn't the square footage that you added up. And I bet you that this structure probably has other lies to it if he got the okay to do it. That it would, wouldn't be what he's saying it's going to be because he's done that in the past already. I agree. I agree. I agree. Yeah, I so, so I, I did do measurements that came out very close to what was on the site plan for the FAR and the lot coverage. So, what it, what is on the plans and what is represented in, in text by an engineer that stamped the drawings um, seems uh, seems validated um, by a check of of, of adding up yeah, the measurement. Quick response. Sure. I've been a professional engineer for over 45 years, involved in licensing and permitting on many projects. I have a very high professional reputation here and throughout the state, and in no way that I falsify any of my findings or numbers whatsoever. And I don't continue to call the You presented that room on the first floor as a kid's playroom, right. and it had a kitchen and a bathroom in it. In your previous plans. Oh, excuse me. To, to have a legal unit, uh, basically you need two exits to the exterior. There was, no, there was only one exit to the exterior. It's, and it was not a, a living unit, so I don't appreciate the end. It was never identified as a living unit, and it's not considered a living unit. It, However, it was brought up and it was yeah. removed. So it is. Yeah, we removed. So it's it has a been point. removed. But that during point. that first presentation, it was presented as kids' playroom. And it was exactly that. I understand, but we we did call it out for what we thought it was, and it was addressed. Right. Okay. Um, anything else for you? Yep. All right. Is there someone else that would like to speak? Ma'am in the yellow. Um, my name is Nancy Silva on 50th Street, and I had a question about you kept repeating slab, but I've been in that basement. It's a full basement. It's a so does it matter if it's a slab or a basement in any of this? How do you get into the I can ask a question? Yeah, I don't, I don't you haven't presented any nope. basement. So is there something below grade or are you talking about yeah, the first floor? Yeah, below grade. Which on the slab? Yeah. All the storage stuff. Yeah, All the storage stuff. I helped her move. Did they change it when they ended up doing the other thing? <clears throat> okay. So the existing building is a, it has frost walls. It was the original structure. I believe that was PJ's variety. It was on that lot. Yeah. And then that structure was enlarged practically 10 feet to the rear and 12 feet up toward 43rd Street. And uh, the entire structure is on the slab, and the perimeter of which is on a uh, concrete block frost Okay, walls. yeah, well, I'm wrong with it. I have a question. So. Okay. Anybody else in the neighborhood? Gentleman in the blue. Let me get. Where's the. Show me where the garage is at, please. What's oh, that? Uh, right here in the front. Um, so this is facing north. I'm saying, but this is. Stairway, right? Correct. This is the garage. Right, this is all garage. So this is going to be up. This, what's this over here? This is going to be storage. If, if you got this, this staircase to what? Going into the home. It's an entryway, in which we have identified as a non habitable area. Like there's no heat or air conditioning in that space. It's just full okay. space. And I think that whole thing is storage. Sir, and your name? one other thing, if, your he name does, if he does pilings, right, is he going to have to go around and check all our foundations? I, no, we're not doing pilings. Don't, we don't have any construction you, drawings. You can't build on an existing building. It, 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 so we did bring that up. La I did bring that up last time. Right. I did say, in, in my experience, it seems a little not quite right to, to do that. And by the time you cut the foundation, by the time you dig down to underpin it, um, I would think that you would just remove it and dig it and, and put what's, what's proper in there and build it up. 
So the zoning board ha does have some limits of of overview and in, uh, of of following the intentions, um, interpretations of the zoning bylaws. There are other things that then get deferred, like conservation commission, like uh, building inspectors, building permits get deferred to the building department. So we can bring up a concern or state it, but it's not something that we're, um, that, that we can pass judgment on because there are other departments in town that, that control that. We have your name, sir, again. Russ Courier. Russ Courier. All right. Anybody else in the audience? Turn back. Frank Benelli. I'm a little confused. I thought the height limits were 35 feet, and to me, it looks like 40 feet 10 inches. So the height, as defined, is to the mean, the mean, the middle of the highest roof. So if somebody has a gabled roof and the, the roof gable height is vertically measured from the ridge down to the eave at the center line of that roof, there, there are some creative gymnastics that can be played <laughs> with the height and length of the roof in order to find the middle or set the middle so that the middle is at 35 feet but the actual structure is much higher. Okay, that doesn't make sense for me, but I accept that. <laughs> it's, um, it's a de definition right. within still, the zoning, and it has been brought up. I, I understand. Purview. I think I understand. But depends on the laws. It, yeah, it depends on, yeah, exactly. Um, to me, it still looks like it's four stories, but the first floor is enclosed. To me, that counts as a story. That counts as space. And... That's just my opinion. And oh, by the way, the extension was made when it was Fred Snack by a nut DJs about 45, 50 years ago. Really? Mm -hmm. Is that when Dominic was there? Hmm? Is that when Dominic was there? I mean, is no, that when Dominic was there? No, Dominic was there. Oh, no, I, I understand that. Yeah, Dominic wasn't there that long. We used to have a place on 64th Street. Yeah, but it wasn't there. That was probably ago. 1590. I think it was one of the genies back then. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Is there someone else that would like to speak in the audience? Sure. Sir. I have a problem with the height. Uh, um, just name. Yeah. My name is Stephen Bondby. I live on that corner. And I'll show you where I am. My house is in this property right here. I have probably two stories if you want. You could probably say that it's not even two stories. And all the other adjacent houses around me are one story. This here is going to be a god-awful sight. Sitting there that high. I'm a builder. I'm a union builder. I have to go by spec when I go out and build. I can't just put something up or ask to go bigger. I just, that's my opinion. I don't think it's going to be a good looking house there. All right, thank you. Agreed. 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 Just, just for clarification, your house is on the other side of 43rd Street? Just My house is on 45th Street, right there. On 45th oh, 40 Street? Yes. Yeah. Right oh. in the corner, right beside Jane's house, the one you want to set off of her house to give her some room. Right. No, we should make it pretty. No, yeah. Right. Like, it's going to go tall. It's going to go Yes, that's my house. To build house. All right, is there anybody else in the audience that would like to speak? It's here. You didn't talk to me. I'm uh, Sharon Benelli. I'm on 41st Street. And uh, my kitchen window would look directly out on what? this. I just think that with everybody here agreeing that this design is not in keeping with our neighborhood, that that is my feeling that, that, that this is just not appropriate to, to put this house three, four stories, whatever it is, this design does not fit in our neighborhood. Like uh, this gentleman said, all of the, the houses are small, mm -hmm. two-story, classic cottages. This is not. And it's, it would not, it would be to the detriment of our neighborhood. Thank you. Next. Anybody else would like to speak? No? Is that 
everyone's had a chance to say something. Would like to say something? Sorry, you didn't talk to me. Okay. Okay. Sorry. It's okay. Anybody? My name is Eileen Fahey. I just have a problem with hearing. <clears throat> you still mention an apartment. During this conversation, no, no, no. I have never mentioned an apartment no. ever. Did you hear you say it? No, I never have said an apartment. You already knew. Well, I, I second. Uh, I don't know what you call it, but it was it was mentioned. So that bothers me. And the other issue is, you said you're making behind the property look better because it's got two gas tanks, and you're going to plant something. Flowers are not going to change a monstrosity in the front. And that's Jane's property, right there. You know, you're blocking everything from her. And I've been at the island for 45 years. I've seen the rain come down. You don't want a good rainstorm. I've seen the puddle. Blizzard of 78, it went all the way across the street. So, I mean, there's a lot of things you don't know about the area. If, you, if I may respond, uh, with regard to flooding, as I mentioned, by increasing this green space, we greatly increase the permeability of the lot, helping the induction of uh, sea flow or runoff from the property that is being infiltrated into the ground. Um, as far as you know, severe plantings and so forth, most important to zoning is the setbacks. Right now, we have a non, non conforming 9.2 foot setback off the parking line. Zoning requires 10 feet. We more than doubled it when it was uh, like 19.6 feet, you know, providing more space. And as far as plantings and so forth, um, you know, we're probably looking at about $20,000 in plantings for this property. You know very well because of what we did at our house. On, Plum Island Boulevard, uh, you know, putting the pines and so forth. So, you know, significant restoration of this lot to back to a natural, like again, sand, dune grass, and native plantings. The houses that you uh, sure. I'm sorry? The house you're building is significant? No, we, we built it two years ago. We're living in it. And we did. You know, a host of plantings yeah. on that property. So, Brian, at this point, I think there, um, you know, we could, we could ask for a motion, to, and I'm not sure where it's going to go. Right. I, I would say that from, from myself, and I haven't asked the board what they feel. Um, I think, in terms of fairness to you, you have you know, reduce the FAR, you have reduced the lot coverage, you did take out the apartment that was seemingly an apartment that was called out. Um, you did remove the, the paving and not just leave the, the, the slab there, um, which for conservation and permeability, but it also just kind of the little week of trying to do this the cheapest way. Uh, that's that's just seemingly how it was going. You've made significant improvements to the landscape. Um, I do think that the dimensional requirements of the number of bedrooms is still a technical issue. And I, in, in terms of what is prescribed by right from going to a non-conforming to a conforming for dimensional requirements that are here. Um, I think if you print out your um, Title V calculations and arguments, it would be helpful. Oh, I included them on the cover letter to the board. Okay. So, oh, right there. Mm -hmm. Excuse me. I'm sorry. May I, may I say something? And I, I apologize for coming in late. But when you come. Thank you. Hey, hang on a second. Okay. So, um, and with that, it seems that the, the finding in terms of the, the neighborhood and the height and the number of floors hinges on the definition of a floor. And it doesn't say occupied. It doesn't say unconditioned. The, the 
previous condition about the stair at the top and the roof was discussed with town council, as you said. But I still think there's there's some clarity that that would um, be needed to help um, settle what we're what we're thinking here, and then with that, that could help then guide the understanding of uh, what you're proposing in terms of being in keeping or not being more detrimental to the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. So I think um, uh, I might recommend without having a motion made, but if we, if we defer and there's some discussions with the building inspector that you should have and some board members should have as well in terms of clarifying that for the record with, with someone else's statement besides ours that we're interpreting and that I believe, believe we are interpreting it. Okay. I know we, we did a earlier discussion with the building inspector and it was based on uh, you know his letter as far as identifying the non-conformities and uh, he saw this as a two-story structure. However, if it's you know, we're, we're agreeable to whatever the, the board would like to do, hopefully. I think in terms of what the, what the board's understanding and how we'd like to base um, a decision and how we'd like to, to make sure everybody has the same understanding of the bylaws and, and how they're written and interpreted, um, we, could, we can still make a decision and we still have some latitude of interpretation in terms of the understanding of, of, of creating a finding, but there are definitions and there are dimensional requirements that, that are in a gray zone of, of making the opinion mm -hmm. at the moment. So I'm, that's my opinion. And so if I <coughs> ask the board members for, or if I ask for a motion, um, I'm not sure really where it's going to go, and so I would probably, with your understanding, ask for a motion for continuance. What would, excuse me, what would we, uh, are the boards looking for in being able to continue it? Uh, are you referring perhaps to sending this to town council for the review? Small house. Uh, we can talk to town council, we can talk to the building. Um, Building inspector or or two avenues to, mm -hmm. to get clarification on other opinions or yeah other opinions and interpretations of our bylaws. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, can I speak some hello? Just sure. outside for a second. Thank you. Okay. Okay. I'm not sure. Oh, come on. I was. I was. I was. I was. I I was. 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 I for example, just a hypothetical, to speak with the building inspector of town council that is considered a two-story building, and uh, you know, we need the general intent of the bylaw. Would it be the board's opinion to approve the project? Because I'm just thinking of time. Yeah. You know, and money in involved in this. I understand you know, the so developers. Um, Incentive. Excuse me, this is our, we're not doing this to flip. This is going to be our. <laughs> um, I, I do think it, 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 in terms of what we said, is it comes down to height and size, and it's a size is determined by number of bedrooms, and height is determined by the first floor okay. story. Sure. So those, those two. Um, definitions from town council and from the building inspector then get get weighed in terms of this. If it comes back if even it's more on the board, if it comes back um, written in black and white then it's then it's, it's 
little more straightforward. One mm -hmm. question. So we'll pause there for a second. Sure. Yes. I am Mary Rose Babin, and I live on the corner of 50th and, and Northern Boulevard, so Kitty Corner across. And I think that part of the reason that it feels like it's so tall as well is like you and the, the woman said on the, on the board, is that um, the top part of it is solid, so it makes it look like it's another story. And so if you mentioned putting like glass or plexi or something like that, it would certainly make a difference. And also, too, with going by the one that's, that's there and seeing it as you come on the island, it obviously doesn't look like a New England structure. And I wonder if, you know, that, that, that arch thing that's up there, and it doesn't look like it's just a, a stairway either. It certainly looks it's like, like it has a landing or something like that in it. You know what I mean? So space can be used for living. And if that even had like a straight line to it, or if there were other things like you were talking about, it goes up like that to be able to make it simple. Part of New England and part of our whole like neighborhood and all that sort of thing is that it, it has some character. You know? um, two things. Um, you know, the, the property is not located in any type of historical district or any mm -hmm. type of overlying district limiting or uh, requiring architectural style and so yeah. forth. Um, so My house is. It's, uh, there, there are no requirements as far as style. The style of our house with the curved roof has been, you see countless comments by people how good it looks. We, we on the board do not, the town of Newbury does not have uh, a section of the bylaws that has some design criteria in it, for better or for worse. The parameters of, of, you know, what color it's painted and what the materials are and whether it's modern or whether it's uh, traditional and whether it's cottage-like for the island, it's just not in the bylaws for us to pass judgment. You can, you can obviously bring up your opinion and, and pass comment and try to influence developers to, to, to do what you think is best, but it's not something that we can pass judgment yeah. on. Right, although I that, think it, it's in keeping with the fact that you're saying that, you know, this particular structure is not in keeping with the neighborhood. For height and size, which mm -hmm. deals with okay. the number of bedrooms and it deals with whether the mm -hmm. first floor is technically counted as a floor, and if mm -hmm. it is because it's enclosed, then it's, it's black and white as to number of floor stories and what's allowable. Um, I would say, Brian, that, you know, 580 four square feet of deck, is, it seems quite expansive, and it, it, including the fact that you're building the stair structure, which doesn't count as a story, the whole roof is equal in square footage to the floor below, and that that just doesn't seem the intent of when we're, we're talking about the mean height of the roof in order to, to control volume and space and, and light and air flow that the flat, full roof deck that's the size of the roof just does seem over, above and beyond and, and over. If, if you had a more modest sized roof deck and maybe a pitched roof on one side, the argument of, of height would certainly be mitigated. Again, my, my last comments, this will be, um, you know, there, there are many homes on the island with full rooftop decks surrounded by parapet walls. Um, I mentioned the most recent being like six homes down the concrete structure, you know, full roof about. And um, as, as far as style, um, you know, loading it up with a lot of trim and so forth only increases the carbon, you know, the carbon footprint of the building, adding a lot of accessories of trim and so forth to the building. You know, and as far as uh, our existing home, on um, Island Boulevard sits about seven feet above existing grade to that of the street. The street elevation, as I mentioned, our garage floor is 
about seven feet above that of the street. So it actually sits on a hill. So on this particular lot, it's going to be basically seven feet lower as it appears from a distance. All right, so with that, um, I think I would ask the board for a motion. Okay. And I would, I, my opinion, um, I'd ask for a motion of continuance. Okay. Um, I think I'll make a motion to continue the meeting to have a discussion with uh, building inspector with council uh, for the next week, next meeting. Or, but I think we have a little conflict. So we need to. Uh, we need to schedule to a time and place. So it would be 7:30. Hopefully, it would be here, um, Chrissy. If we don't have. Michelle's not going to be here. Michelle, when are you not going to be here? Uh, 18th through 20th. Um, Next year, 21st. Oh, so, um, is, is the board willing to meet? Um, So it's the 14th or the, or the, the 28th. Um, that wouldn't be able to do the 28th. Yeah, do it. Come on. 14th? Are you, are you guys available on the 14th? Of September? Yeah. Yeah. Do you want to go one more? Ask help? Do you want to go one more meeting? Or just ask for a vote for tonight? some reason it does not pass, then the same or similar um, proposed application cannot be presented for two years. That's correct. You know that. Yeah. Um, I have a question. You always have the right to appeal, so. You don't, you want to speak with the building inspector and town council? Yes. Um, and say the say, okay, the garage does not count as a story. And whatever um, the other... Number of bedrooms. What's I'm talking about? The bedrooms. The count of okay, bedrooms the are of going bedrooms. from technically so, no bedrooms to three bedrooms, and whether it's by right two bedrooms or it's three bedrooms. Right, and, and then... And how that might be determined. And then what is the, what is the number of stories? So if they say, oh, okay, the garage is not a story and you can do three bedrooms. Is it still then based on, um, your opinion whether or not it fits with the neighborhood? It, it, that would be the consideration of, of understanding of the, of the property in which to grant the finding that if technically it meets, and I think we've stated that previously on the board, that if there is a property and it is non-conforming and improvements are made to the dimensional requirements uh, and as many, you know, the intent of the bylaw is to get every property <coughs> back to the dimensional requirements that are in there, um, those are then weighed against the, quote, neighborhood that is surrounding the, the property and, and that is Plum Island. So you you would technically have, I think, the intent of the bylaw. The question would be then is 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 being over on FAR and lot coverage deemed detrimental to the neighborhood. Okay. So it, it, it would seem to be in favor if if the building inspector and town council come back with written statements of of the bedrooms and of the floors, then there's you know there's less of an argument as a, as opposed to just you know, it seems it seems bigger than it than you're presenting it because that that's what we're after is is a clear definition of that as opposed to an interpretation and and right now those those two un conditions and the surrounding neighborhood does seem that the, the building that you're proposing is excessive. Um, 
also in, in terms of a, an argument is to look at properties in terms of we're, we're not trying to, to limit you but we're only trying to, we're not trying to afford you more than, than what your neighbor would have for the same size lot with a, with a similar condition in the, in the same neighborhood right that you're, you're not doing more that someone else can't do but you have equal conditions and we're, we're finding in favor of one, not the other. So I think it would be interesting to, to continue and, and have that. Oh, can I speak to help one more time? Sure. Yeah, we'll, we'll allow that. Well, thank you. Is there any other meetings like on September 14th, do you know? Is this, is this free every Thursday? Mostly, yes, mostly every Thursday. I can go downstairs tonight and go downstairs. I'm just talking about the district. Yeah. Discuss is you know basically you know, appreciate you know the offer of getting clarity on the number of stories and uh, what was the other height I guess um, that it, it's still a question even if those two items just found um, what we're proposing is to be uh, supported and okayed by both the building inspector and town council that it still appears that there's a uh, questionable as to whether the board would vote in favor of this project. And if that being the case, we really don't want to just keep extending this with looking at its feeling it's going to be a negative vote just because the building doesn't fit in with the neighborhood because of its height. Um, again, the only comment is that's why they have height regulations. It's an empty lot. On the north side, to the, to the street on the west, the street on the south, and to the east, you know, we doubled the existing setback from 9 feet to almost 20 feet. And really not much moving. Well, in, in case of making that argument, then you're making, um, I don't think you want to suggest what the limitations are on a, a blank lot because they, they would be smaller. I would say that if town council comes back and, and, uh, and building inspector come back and they, they say that the garage for some reason doesn't count as a story and that going from a non-conforming to a conforming residential you have the right to two, two bedrooms and not plus one to get to three then, then that, that seems unfavorable. If if they come back and, and say that yes, you're allowed up to three in the argument of the um, current sewer and what, what is being provided and what is being taxed for the restaurant is, and you're lessening that is allowable to have three and that, that's favorable. And, um, yeah, there, I don't know if there would be much other than an, an opinion of, of design to stop the project. I, I see it. Yes, it is time, but if it if you go and you get a negative vote then and you appeal it, you'll be out twice as long as as if waiting a month to, to get a decision. And I think it also brings clarity for what you would want to do or, or what you could do in the future to make things more streamlined for you. Mm -hmm. What's good? I, that, that's fine. I just don't want to um, go through that and have it, you know, okay, the town council agrees with this and, and it's not considered three stories, and then have it uh, denied because of, uh, you don't like the design, or you don't like the way it looks, you don't like the, uh, the, the way it fits with the neighborhood. I'd just rather just move on. You would have an, yes, and, and following this process, you would have an appealable decision if, if you don't follow the process, I don't know how much there is to base the, the, the argument on. That's, um, I 
years. That's just my opinion. I, I think it would be um, favorable for you to, to have the extension and, and to get clarification. Yes, thank you. Okay. Yeah. Is there a motion to be had to, for continuation then? Yes, uh, make a motion to continue the meeting to September 14th at 7.30. Um, here. Here. In this room. Is there a way we can look at the calendar now? Um, yeah. This room is available. Thank you. 